So my next question is for Matt as the uh, incredible lawyer on our panel today. So Matt, are stable coins actually legal? Like we've heard a lot about the ICOs and illegal securities and, and conversations around that and people concerned about putting their, putting their investment dollars there. So are a stable coin legal and then who would actually regulate them? Yeah, no, thanks, Kalea. Um, can everyone hear me? Is this good? Okay. Yeah, I don't know what a credible lawyer. I'll try to. He's, he's meet our that director standard. of legal for the agency. <laughs> he is amazing. Thanks. Yeah, no, um, I, I do think that they are legal. Um, um, I think there are uh, some regulators that would uh, have jurisdiction over stablecoin issuers. Um, the first is probably FinTrack. Um, next June, um, when the amendments to the regulations to the Proceeds of Crime uh, Money Laundering Terrorist Financing Act come into effect, um, anyone running a, a crypto exchange or a digital wallet, um, you know, maybe even a private blockchain um, where there is cryptocurrency and fiat being transacted will be virtual currency dealers and they'll be um, regulated as money service businesses. Uh, under the federal anti-money laundering uh, legislation. So I think FinTrack um, would be one regulator. <clears throat> the more interesting, in my mind, piece is the, uh, is the securities law component. And, and would the um, provincial securities regulators in Canada have jurisdiction over um, companies that issue stable coins? And I, and I think for some of them, the answer is, is yes. And I think it really depends um, on, on the structure. And, and, um, on how the, the stable coins are, are, are structured and, and set up. Um, I, my experience with stable coins is limited to the, the fiat tied coins, so I don't have much experience with the algorithmic or mixed asset um, structure, which um, I, like I think, for example, um, the, the Libra plan in its initial f phase with this basket of, of national currencies was probably a security. Um, I, there's no settled law on this, um, so um, you know we don't have any written guidance specifically from the regulator on on stable coins. But um, um, you know if uh, if you're offering something to the public and um, um, the issuer is receiving money and there's a risk um, associated with um, uh, you know, the issuer and it becomes the issuer's property and it becomes subject to the risks of the issuer, um, then um, it's interesting. Like, it, while it might not fall into the investment contract uh, prong of the definition of a security, it might be evidence of indebtedness, it might be a promissory note. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think the answer is it depends. I think that uh, for a lot of um, stablecoin projects, um, just because of the way they're structured, they fall into the evidence of indebtedness uh, prong of the definition of a security under Alberta Securities Act. Um, so, yeah, and it, but it's 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 weird because the it's uh, when we talk about cryptocurrency, we usually think about uh, the investment contract um, prong of the definition of, of a security, but there's a whole bunch of other. Um, prongs of, of that definition that uh, that might apply in this case. So uh, the usual um, characteristics of an investment contract, um, you know, the expectation of profit, um, th that's, those aren't, um, th those don't exist with stable coins. So there's usually no expectation of profit, but there still is um, arguably a risk uh, tied um, with the issuer and, and what the issuer is doing with the money. and. Um, you know, if the issuer goes down, um, people might lose their money, and I think that's where, you know, the regulators would want to have jurisdiction over something like that. So. 